This video is sponsored by PCBWay. Welcome everyone. In this video I'm going to show you how to build your own cloud chamber. So I know that there are many videos on YouTube where people build their own cloud chamber, but uh, if you check those videos, you can often see that uh, they don't really succeed to build it properly. And uh, they use different kind of shortcuts or they just uh, don't understand how the Peltier coolers work. So they don't succeed to build, let's say, a good cloud chamber. But of course, there are also good examples on YouTube. So it's not only uh, bad examples, but there are many large channels uh, who are showing the bad example. So me as a small channel, I will try to use the correct way to build a cloud chamber. And actually the cloud chamber is pretty simple. So you will see that uh, with these uh, tiny amount of components, uh, we can show the trails or trajectories of different ionizing uh, radiations or particles. So the concept of the cloud chamber is that we have a chamber, an enclosed volume, where there is a super saturated vapor. And in our case, the vapor will be uh, isopropyl alcohol. So I just have this cleaning alcohol and I will use this. And then if, if there is something that disturbs uh, this uh, super saturated vapor, then what will happen is that condensation starts at those points or lines where the disturbance passed through. And why I phrase it like this is because, uh, for example, an ionizing particle is passing through this uh, vapor cloud or volume, and then it disturbs uh, the super saturated vapor. So therefore it will leave a streak or a trail uh, behind itself. And then uh, these ionizing radiations could be, for example, alpha particles or electrons or other uh, subatomic particles, muons, for example, which can interact with the vapor particles. So you can see that we have these uh, components here and uh, actually these uh, two CPU coolers are equivalent. It's just duplicated because I can show uh, things uh, better to you, but uh, let's see what we have here. So the first thing that we should look at is uh, this component, which is a CPU cooler. So it's a simple air, air cooler. And typically we have the fan in between these uh, two uh, separate heat sinks. And then the air is just passing through. And obviously the heat from this surface is then transferred to the fins or lamella of the heat sink. And then it's uh, dissipated into the air. So this is a very cheap or rather cheap uh, component. Uh, there is a link in the description or on my website where you can read an article about this uh, thing. Uh, you can buy it using my links. And uh, this is one of the main components. And uh, this will be used to cool uh, the Peltier coolers. So this surface is large enough. So we have a four by four centimeter uh, surface. Uh, to cool the hot side of, uh, of a Peltier cooler. And in this setup, we will use two Peltier coolers. And this is what uh, is messed up by a lot of uh, YouTubers, that they just don't understand how these work and they stack it in a wrong way. So first of all, why do we want to stack? Because we need to reach a very low temperature. Whenever we stack Peltier coolers, that means that we will reach uh, lower and lower temperatures because we increase the temperature gradient between the hot side of the bottom Peltier, which is in contact with the air cooler, and the cold side of the top Peltier, which is in contact with the environment, let's say. And in our case, the environment is the bottom of the chamber. So then what we will have to do is that we take the Peltier cooler, hot side, and uh, then the hot side, after applying some uh, thermal grease, I will not do it because I have already uh, assembled the system. So you apply some thermal grease on the surface and then you put uh, this with the cold side facing upwards. And then you spread another layer of uh, thermal grease on this. And then you put the hot side of the next cooler on top of this. And your sandwich is done. And uh, what is important to know here is that the bottom cooler, this guy here, has to be a high performance cooler because it has to be able to carry the heat generated by this, which consists of two terms. 
One term is the joule heat generated uh, in this Pattier cooler, the top unit, and that joule heat is just made up uh, from the product of the current and the voltage passing through this uh, unit. So for example, if you run it at 10 volts and 5 amps, that is 10 times 5 equals 50, so 50 watts of power. Plus, at those values, this uh, unit will be passing through a certain amount of heat from the cold side to the hot side. So we have two terms, the joule heat and the pumped heat. So then the bottom Peltier cooler has to be able to deal with that. And then the CPU cooler has to be sized in a way that it is able to handle the wall heat uh, of the system. So the joule heat of these two guys plus the heat transferred from the cold side of the top Peltier cooler. And uh, how I chose these is the following. At the bottom will be a TEC 12715. This is a very high performance uh, Peltier cooler. Uh, it can pump a lot of watts and also it can generate a lot of power. So then uh, this uh, CPU cooler is uh, really on the borderline to properly cool it, but it can do it. And then the top one will be a TEC 12703, a 3 amp unit. So if you run it at the max, uh, let's say parameters, it will roughly uh, generate 45 to 50 watts of joule heat and it will pump, yeah, depending on how large gradient you create between the hot side and the cold side, certain amount of heat. And then you can do the math. And this is what is missed by uh, many uh, makers. They just skip the math. They just think that they put together these, they run them at the maximum power that they are sized for, and it's done. But it's not like that. You, you should not do it like that because you have to carefully calculate the generated heat and the amount of uh, uh, delta uh, T, the temperature difference between the hot side and the cold side, and the Q, so the pumped heat uh, through the Peltier cooler in order to make this system work. So I will put some calculations on my uh, video and uh, you will see how it works. But also when I run this device, I will tell you the voltage and the current on the two sides. And then you will see uh, how this works and you will get the parameters uh, straight uh, for, for use. So you will be uh, directly be able to use it. So we have these sandwiched uh, Peltier coolers on top of this. And, but then uh, we have to keep this on the surface somehow. So then let's look at this guy now. So this is just another uh, CPU cooler. Uh, you can see that instead of uh, being split in the middle, this is a big chunk of uh, heat sink. And then we can put the, the fans on the two sides. But the principles are the same. The number of the heat sink uh, or heat pipes are the same. And uh, it, it's basically the same construction. So what is, uh, uh, what is seen, what can be seen here is that we have the two Peltier coolers there. You can see one and then another is under the plastic part. And then once again, the bottom part is the 715 and the top part is the 703. And then here, actually I have the same material as my gloves. So I just put uh, a used glove under the uh, clamping mechanism here. Uh, just to have a black uh, surface and you will see it. why do we need that. And then uh, you can see that we have this clamp and you can also hopefully see that there is a groove going around this uh, pole. And uh, then we have the back side and you can see that I'm just using some kind of plastic here again, uh, which is allowing me to clamp everything together. And that's very important that we have to use some uh, considerable uh, force to clamp uh, down the Peltier coolers. Otherwise there could be air pockets uh, between the uh, surfaces and that is not good uh, for the heat transfer. And also you have to make sure that they uh, match uh, each other perfectly. So there is no twisting or something that the surfaces perfectly overlap. So then that enhances the uh, heat transfer, or to be precise, it doesn't get worse if it's uh, properly aligned. And then uh, why I have this uh, top plastic part uh, with the grooves is because I have the chamber 
which if we start from the top, it has a transparent window that will be important for our experiment. And then I have this, let's call it brace, uh, which holds together these four uh, acrylic uh, plates. And then I have the acrylic plate here and I gently uh, reduced their thickness a little bit. They are def default uh, two millimeter thick, but uh, I had to reduce it. So then these uh, plastic plates uh, perfectly click on this if I find a good alignment. And then you can see that it stays there. So now we have a chamber, which is an encapsulated uh, volume. And uh, that is what we need. So since I'm showing these 3D printed parts, it's a good time to talk about this video sponsor PCBWay. So PCBWay is mainly specialized on PCB related services, but they also have, for example, 3D printing. And they are very relevant for this because I shared uh, 3D files for these uh, models. So you can go to my website, download those files, and then you can head over to PCBWay.com, select their 3D printing services, and then using my files, you can use their services to print the same objects if you don't have a 3D printer. And then you can build your own cloud chamber. So I hope that you will use their services and you will make your own cloud chamber using PCB based 3D printed parts. So now with this guy here, we have the chamber, but uh, how do we make it into a cloud chamber? So the trick is this guy here, a piece of felt. So what I'm going to do with this is that I will use a little bit or a bit too much isopropyl alcohol, spray it on this so it will be damp, and then uh, I will fold this and uh, then just place it inside this chamber once I can manage to show you how it will be done. So of course it will be nicely uh, folded, but then uh, it will be folded something like this. So we can have a good view from the top. And why I do it? Because then uh, this thing is placed at the top and then the alcohol constantly uh, evaporates there and then it will fall down towards the bottom where it meets the surface of the Peltier coolers. And that is roughly minus 30 something degrees Celsius. So it will be enough to create that superheated uh, layer, uh, roughly one centimeter thick layer uh, above the surface of the cold side of the Peltier cooler. And then we will see uh, what happens there. And uh, then I want to show you that I have actually a very good source of radiation. And here a huge disclaimer that don't do it at home. I'm doing it at home, but I'm, I'm really a scientist. So I, I know what I'm doing. But this guy here is a very nice uh, radioactive source. And uh, first of all, we have this once it shines properly. So this is an ion chamber. It's called ion chamber because they cannot sell it if it's called something else. But this is a small ionizing chamber which is used in fire alarms. And it contains this ring actually, if, if, if I can focus on it. That ring which is now pointing at the camera is shooting uh, alpha particles towards the camera. It's uh, americium and it is alpha decaying to neptunium, which is further decaying uh, into, I forgot what, but I will write it on the video. So then we have a bunch of uh, alpha particles from, from this ring. And uh, just to show you that this is really a radioactive stuff, I will use my GM counter. So I have this guy here. Here's the GM tube. And I just need a small wattage source. So here's the tube, I turn on the power supply and hopefully you can hear the click. And these clicks are just from the natural radioactive background, uh, which is not too much. And now I have the source here, so I put it close to the tube. Why I need to put it close to the tube? Because the alpha radiation gets uh, absorbed by air basically very uh, quickly, so even if I do this, there's just a small uh, increase in the radiation because of the, let's say, side products. But if I do this, it's hot. So believe me, this is radioactive here. And once again, don't do this at home. Once I uh, assemble the chamber, I will put this small ring in the chamber 
pointing sideways, so it will shoot uh, particles in this direction. Uh, so it, we will see the traces or trajectories of those uh, particles. So what we will have to do is, as I said, I take this felt and uh, off camera I spray this thing on it because I don't want to mess up the things over the table. So you can see that's isopropyl alcohol right there. So it stays there and it doesn't block too much light. So this is done. And then I take my source and uh, try to put it here. And actually, uh, the radiation from this gets absorbed very quickly. So it is not really dangerous. Alpha particles are typically not very dangerous. Uh, nevertheless, you should not uh, play with them. Uh, they are more dangerous when you eat them. So don't eat them or don't drink tea with these things. So now the alpha particles will shoot that way. So uh, that's good for us. And then this goes on. So now the chamber is on. So I just need a fan and uh, the fan will blow that way. It doesn't really matter, but I just want to transfer uh, the heat away. So I just turned that on right now. And then I have a power supply, uh, which is a high power power supply that will feed my TEC12715. And then for the top Pathier cooler, I will use a separate power supply, but you can buy these uh, power supplies. They are typically for LEDs and you can see that this is a 12 volt 30 amps. And then what you can do is that you can uh, manipulate them by this potentiometer there uh, to bring them down to roughly 10 volts. And uh, that 10 volts should be the maximum voltage that you run through your uh, 15 amp uh, Pathier cooler. And then you grab a DC-DC converter something like this, use the same output from here, the uh, 10 volt output, and convert it down to roughly 8 volts, which will run your top unit. But I will uh, put the, uh, the precise numbers on the video uh, later on. But uh, yeah, that's how you should run them. You should not run them at full power. So now I power these things on, uh, but before that, uh, I will switch uh, the camera and uh, look at this uh, chamber from a better perspective because uh, it will be easier for you to see what is happening in the chamber. So now you see the inside of the chamber and you can see that uh, the camera is still shaking but what is more important is at the bottom uh, you can see my alpha emitter. So now first of all I will uh, power up uh, the bottom Pathier cooler and this is very important that at the time I just start with the bottom. So it starts soon. So now you should see that uh, something is freezing on the surface. I will try to make some uh, light. So now I have to wait for a while just to let the top Pathier cooler cool down by the bottom Pathier cooler. And now you can see that it started to cool down because you can see the uh, condensation there, but uh, that's not enough. So we have to wait for roughly two minutes. So now the bottom uh, Pathier cooler is the only Pathier cooler which is running and it is running at 10.32 volts and it is taking up 8.98 amps. So basically now uh, the heat generated by it is let's say 90 watts and then uh, based on this we can estimate uh, the temperature uh, of the cold side because we know roughly the hot side which is uh, roughly around 40 to 50 degrees celsius and then uh, we can calculate the cold side temperature as well as the transferred heat and now since uh, we are over two minutes of waiting time I start up the top Pathier cooler and I start it at 6 volts 
and uh, 1.7 amps. So now, of course, if I start to run heat through this system, uh, we will uh, manipulate the bottom Peltier cooler, but uh, that doesn't matter right now. And you can already see at the top left corner that we have some clouds uh, showing. And uh, probably you would see it better if I would adjust the lights, so let me do that. First of all, I turn off this. And there, there we go, it works immediately. So you can see the alpha particles, uh, especially if I adjust the lights perfectly. I'm just using my bicycle's headlight, and that's perfectly enough. So now I'm increasing the voltage on the top Peltier cooler, just to make the things colder. But you can see already the traces of the alpha particles, it's crazy. But uh, now I just tell you the parameters which you should use to run your system. So the top Peltier cooler is at 7 watts, 1.88 amps. But the only thing is what matters is that you set the voltage to 7 volts. And then Ohm's law will anyway uh, control the amps. And then the bottom Peltier cooler is at 10.32 uh, volts. And it is taking 9.10 amps. And actually, since I know these parameters now, I see it on the power supply. Uh, we can also estimate uh, the different cooling powers, so we can see if we can improve the things or, or not. And as you can see, half of the chamber is in shadows because uh, I haven't aligned the lights perfectly. But if I play around with the lights, now I mess it up, of course, uh, we can probably see the traces in an even better way. So let me uh, play with this. So now you can see the cloud, but uh, you cannot see a single particle, which is interesting. So now I think I could adjust uh, this thing properly and you can see the lights. Uh, or the particles better. So once again what happens is that that ring at the bottom of the picture emits alpha particles, basically helium atoms, and those helium atoms ionize the uh, trail that they pass through, and that ionized trail interacts with the vapor, creating condensate centers. So then uh, the vapor particles can condensate on those uh, trails, created trails or basically there are individual particles or condensating centrums uh, along that trail, but that, that's what uh, happens. And uh, then, yeah, you can see that this works uh, pretty nicely. So it's, it's there. So while we are looking at these nice uh, particles, now I'm holding the lamp with my hand because that was the best way to uh, create this uh, light. I can talk about this a bit more. So yes, you can see different uh, kind of particles as I mentioned. And you can see that uh, this thing basically works. So we have a four by four centimeter surface area that is basically encapsulated between the top and the bottom of the picture. And then on the sides, you can see a bit more of the chamber walls. So we have this surface area, which is uh, the same area as the surface of the Peltier cooler. And about this area, we can create this uh, super uh, heated vapor. And you can see that we can see very often very nice uh, particles. And obviously I'm kind of cheating because I have an alpha source there. But uh, even without that, you would see particles uh, quite often because the background radiation uh, has a lot of particles. So a bunch of particles are pe passing through our body every second, but we don't notice it because yeah, they just pass through and they are not dangerous uh, for us. And uh, by the way, I'm planning to create a much larger, let's say 10 by 10 centimeter chamber, but I just don't have the resources for it. So if you happen to have some extra money, please uh, don't uh, hesitate to support me either via leaving a tip or donation on my PayPal 
which is on my website, or you can become my Patreon and uh, support me on a regular basis every month with a few bucks. And then uh, I can uh, pipe that money into this project where I will build a much bigger uh, chamber. So the idea is that if I have enough money and I can somehow crowdfund this uh, project, then I will have everything, all the design uh, parameters, all the files and the calculations and everything uh, released for free. So every enthusiast can build their own Peltier cooler based uh, uh, cloud chamber and as I said it will be rather large 10 by 10 or 15 by 10 uh, centimeters large so a lot of uh, particles can be uh, simultaneously observed but you can see that even within this small uh, area we can see a lot of uh, kind of cool action so I think uh, we saw enough uh, particles and I could show you how uh, this thing works and once again if you want to have these uh, 3D printable files 3D printed, go to pcbway.com and use their 3D printing services to get your files uh, manufactured. And then you can follow my instructions on my website uh, where I clearly demonstrated how this thing is uh, built and how you can make your own. And I also shared uh, every parameters. So that means that you can replicate my experiment and hopefully you will see the uh, same uh, nice uh, traces that I'm showing you right now. So I hope that this video was useful to you. I hope you learned something and see you in the next video.